you should add these games to your 2024 wishlist. Hi friends, and welcome to the world of indie survival crafting games. There are a lot of really interesting games in early access right now, but there are five games in particular that are worth keeping your eye on. These games all have a few things in common. All of them are in early access currently with planned release dates in 2024. All of them have multiplayer as a planned feature or are actively testing it. All of them feature a survival setting, all of them are open world games, and all of them are made by small indie studios. If that sounds enticing to you, then you may want to stick around and see if any of these games pique your interest. I have played each of them for over 40 hours each, so my recommendations come from a place of long-term interest. If you enjoy my overview, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel to be much appreciated. But without further ado, and in no particular order, here are the top 5 survival crafting games releasing in 2024. My first recommendation is for Astrolabe Interactive's Aloft. Regular viewers will know that I have worked closely with Astrolabe to cover Aloft updates as they release, and no matter how many times I revisit this floating world, it always conveys a sense of peace and calming that is really hard to find in survival games. Unless you're fighting hordes of angry mushrooms, that is. The core concept is pretty simple, and a lot like Raft if you enjoyed our favorite ocean floating simulator. You go island to island, gathering resources and unlocking cool blueprints along the way. Craft your way up tiers of tools to combat the fungal corruption that seeps through the islands whirling their way around an eternal hurricane. While the concept is simple, the gameplay is consistently fun and engaging, allowing you to move at your own pace. Whether you'd rather rush in and test out the capacities of the latest combat-focused update, or whether you want to take things slow and build yourself a lovely home island full of fluffy and feathered friends, Aloft is a sandbox game in one of its best capacities. As someone who highly enjoys base building, I honestly think Aloft has one of the best base building mechanics in any survival crafting game that I've played, and the roadmap through early access promises even more than what can already be accomplished. The art style leans towards fantastic, almost cartoonish joy sometimes, and is full of vibrant colors and ambient environments to enjoy. Currently we've gotten to experience the lush wonders of the Emerald Isles, but we know for certain that more biomes are coming soon, bringing even more building opportunities alongside the next major update, which is focused on decorations and more gear options. Aloft allows you to soar through the sky in your own way by choosing your own home island and turning it into a cozy sailing home or a formidable airship. There's plenty of nuance and options in the combat, and the dev team is very clear about what can be expected in the full release. It's going to contain more enemy varieties, more islands, more biomes, more gear, just more, and I cannot wait. While the full version of Aloft isn't available at the time of writing, you can try out an infinitely playable demo for free on Steam. So if you want to go with this game while it's still on early access, I couldn't recommend it more. If you don't like airships but do love space, Planet Crafter may be more your speed. This survival crafting game is perfect for the factory curious survival enjoyer, and it's relatively reminiscent of a love child made from Subnautica and Satisfactory. A lot of the Steam reviews refer to Planet Crafter as Subnautica but in space, and I don't necessarily agree with that, although I can definitely see the inspiration behind those comments. The core premise is that you were convicted of a crime, and you could choose between either a traditional prison sentence or being shipped off to a barren wasteland planet to turn it into a suitable opportunity for colonization. Obviously, you chose the planet route, and now it's your mission to turn this giant orange dust ball into a lush oasis. There are others who have come before you with less success, but we don't need to worry about them. By far and large, one of the coolest mechanics in Planet Crafter is watching the planet literally change as you progress. You'll get to watch the sky slowly turn blue, watch water level rise, and grass grow from nothing. Your progress is marked by this terraformation index, a measure of how much change you've influenced via oxygen production, heat generation, and other metrics that change as you move through the game. This is something that can be optimized down to a T if you're more of an engineering type player, or it could be left running in the background as a kind of cookie clicker while you go exploring. There are also plenty of opportunities to explore the world, like ice that melts at a certain heat level or vines that grow after a certain amount of plant mass. If you're focused on lore, Planet Crafter doesn't maintain a singular linear storyline. It instead consists of tons of smaller adventures that can lead you down several winding paths, encouraging you to explore and find out more for yourself. Along the way, you'll find new and exciting biomes, new valuable resources, and sometimes a few things more. You can upgrade your machinery to increase your terraformation tier, unlocking new stages of your biosphere and moving from plants all the way up to vertebrate animals. Or if you really want to go ham on the factory end, you could build up a fully automatic business empire to feed all of your resource addictions. Just make sure your head doesn't become the final resting place of one of the meteors falling from the sky and you should be good to go. Forever Skies plays quite a lot like a combination of Raft and Subnautica. It's like Raft in the fact that you're going island to island while collecting debris that floats past you, and it's like Subnautica in the fact that you scan blueprints to unlock them, you visit unique biomes and locations, and face many creatures that will frighten your pants off. This apocalyptic game centers around a not-so-futuristic Earth that has been submerged under a layer of dust following an ecological collapse, 
and the surface of the planet is riddled with deadly creatures and diseases to fill the void that humanity left behind. A small group of humans did escape into space, but didn't manage to escape the viruses of the old planet. As a scientist, you may be able to save humanity by finding the cure, but that requires braving the dangers below the surface of the dust. The dust is a dark and dangerous place, but there are so many wonders to uncover hidden both above and below its toxic surface. Forever Skies is definitely the heaviest hitter in the survival category of this list, considering it requires you to maintain health, hunger, thirst, energy, and immunity levels in order to make it through the day. But if you are successful in keeping yourself alive and traveling around the planet, your adventures are rewarded by the unlockable blueprints you can use to customize and upgrade your airship. Exploring the different categories of islands presents you with unique puzzles to overcome, new resources to gather, and plenty of fun collectibles. Plus, there's a fun, looming sense of dread that follows all of the lore tied to this game. With hints of combat, plenty of exploration, and an airship to build, there's plenty to keep you entertained for hours on end. The story promises to be really engaging, unlocking more game mechanics and points of interest as you progress, and unlocking even more opportunities to change the world around you. Plus, sometimes you get to topple buildings to watch skyscrapers collapse, which is also pretty darn cool. If you're a Dungeons & Dragons fan and also happen to like pirates, I am happy to introduce you to the world of Salt 2 Shores of Gold. If you played the original Salt game, then the concept of this may seem familiar. You're a pirate, and you get quests to go places and do things. Those places come in the form of distinct islands with various biomes, factions, and life to deal with. Those quests come in the form of find this, steal that, or stab this. In some ways, it's your stereotypical RPG. In others, it's your stereotypical survival game. In all ways, it's a great game to sink endless hours of sailing into and live out your best pirating dreams. I know that Sea of Thieves just released their solo server update, but if you would prefer a pirate game that is built around that RPG co-op experience and won't feel lacking without PvP, then Salt 2 may be the better route for you. As I mentioned earlier, it's also heavily inspired by D&D, and you can flush out your character's skill trees and equipment to align with your personal playstyle. Choose between weapon types, attack styles, and general skills to improve your gameplay and progression, pairing your tool talents to build out your perfect pirate. You can also customize your perfect pirate ship to accompany your perfect pirate. There are three styles of ship that all have a range of levels in which higher level ships travel faster at the expense of more experience and materials to craft. You can hop from island to island hunting deer, slaying skeletons, and gathering as much loot as you desire. The developers have mentioned that they were inspired by the Elder Scrolls series like Skyrim, and that shines through in many of the dungeons and quest lines found in the game. Since I covered this game in a separate video earlier this year, there have also been several major updates that I think weren't mentioning directly. For one, fast travel is a thing, so you don't spend 25 minutes sailing unless that's something you actively want to do, and two, there is an official main quest line. Three, there are also new pistols for better ranged damage than bows. If you're looking for a game that has a story, but also plenty of other stuff to keep you occupied with specific objectives, Salt 2 is great for that. It's the perfect game to sit down and relax in with more than enough variety to keep things interesting and let you explore your dreams on the high seas without the risk of BVP. Lens Island is an exploration-focused survival game with touches of combat thrown in. It's similar to Stardew Valley in that the game is what you make of it. It can be a farming simulator, a monster hunter's dream, a home decoration game, or anything in between. Explore a vast range of biomes with diverse landscapes, building up infrastructure and interacting with villagers as you go. As you hop from island to island, gather up plenty of useful resources to build your dream home. Or if you're interested in story progression, follow through the five-act main quest line. If you want a combat-centric survival game, then Lens Island may be a good fit for you. Roam through the handmade dungeons to fend off unique enemies and bosses to find the rare lightstones hidden below the world's surface. Whether you want to be a peaceful fisherman, a powerful merchant, or an unrivaled warrior, Lens Island is a game built around a multitude of playstyles, making it a good fit for anyone who wants a variety of experiences in a neat little package. As a current marine biologist and former restoration ecologist, this game also focuses just the right amount on environmental details, like tide cycles and forest succession. It's a simple game in all the best ways, adding complexity not where it overcomplicates the mechanics, but where it enhances user experience. Lens Island is a charming, calming, but sometimes intense survival crafting RPG that allows you to play your way and replay it as many times as you want without getting bored. Regardless of your preferred survival style, this game is bound to have something in it for you. Lens Island was originally made by a single-person development team crafted to be his dream game. With more than six years in development now and a full team behind it, you can finally experience everything that Lens Island was meant to be later in 2024. And those are my top five survival crafting games that are planned to fully release this coming year in 2024. All of these games are ones that I have personally enjoyed playing and think would be a great addition to any survival game enthusiast's library. As always, I encourage you to leave your feedback below, and of course, tell me what games you're most looking forward to this year. Anyways, I think that's everything for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already, it really helps me out. 
I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.